Yeah, the honestly, so far the issues that I had with Windows, like the uh, the it's basically the issues I had were almost all related to Explorer.exe. That like the basically, which is like basically the desktop environment of Windows, mm -hmm. um, and it was like foggy for some reason uh like when I, I couldn't like open the calculator where when i opened the calculator it was unresponsive for like a minute and other i couldn't like alt tab i couldn't switch between like uh the tabs from the taskbar and stuff like that mm -hmm. other programs still worked fine for example if i had a um, browser on my second monitor i could still use it for mm -hmm. and but i couldn't just alt tab or do things like that and uh, it's actually fixed now oh that's good. i don't know I don't know why, but if I reinstalled the Microsoft Store with some PowerShell command, it just fixed itself. <laughs> it's like somehow the Microsoft Store is just so ingrained into Windows 10 that it's uh, like controls everything basically. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it, it just broke somehow. But so far, I, I haven't had a single person who said that they've had the same issue with uh, Windows, with the calculator and stuff. And I actually believe that in the sense that I also haven't had issues like that with Windows myself. But the issue that I do have constantly is the um, the language, um, the keyboard layouts. Mm -hmm. For some reason, Windows keeps having, adding like random keyboard layouts to my uh, typing. I, I assume it's like trying to add some keyboard layouts based on the program I'm using or something. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't add like some Polish or something like that randomly. It always has like the layout I already have, but um like sl slightly different for for example it had it like if i have english if i have for example i have the japanese and estonian layout but it often adds the english layout for some reason into the list as well so i have to like as click multiple times to get the language i want mm -hmm. that's the constant issue right now i don't have it but it, it's most likely going to come back eventually um but the other thing is that you know I'm happy with Windows in terms of usability, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I'm reinstalling it and stuff, it's just like it has all those trackers and stuff. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm too hardcore about privacy and things like that, um, but I would like to minimize it mm -hmm. to the best of my ability. So, like, I usually click reject <laughs> on, <laughs> on cookies and stuff like that, but. Um, it just makes me appreciate. I basically the conclusion in the intro was that I just things like tracking and whatnot and data collection have made me appreciate um, open soft source software and free software yep. more than I used to because before it I didn't see it as such a big issue as I do now. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing about it was that uh, it was the video editing stuff. Uh, Adobe going subscription based and being so incredibly expensive that mm. unless I'm, you know, earning thousands a month by doing multimedia stuff, it's not going to be rational for me mm. to uh purchase their subscription. Um and basically there aren't a lot of good other um video editing soft so there aren't that many good video editing um programs out there that aren't Adobe. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve is acceptable and in some t in Unless some ways better than Linux. Adobe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I am able to use something that isn't Adobe, but like if there was an open source program, a open source video editor that um, was as good as is Adobe software, then mm. those issues wouldn't happen. It would still be free and, you know, it would be great, but so that was one of the reasons why I was more I was interested in trying Linux, and the reason I also tried Gaten Live, um, just, <laughs> the, just in case you know if I just, might yeah. ever need to go for an open source video editor, so I I could try one. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I didn't stick with it is because I had some issues with it straight away, and like I said before, video editing I hate it in the sense that. This, I'm always having issues with the software mm -hmm. and I just don't want it to get any worse than it already is. And I want to be able to do everything I want to do in terms of the functionality of the program. If there's something 
that I'm limited by, I can't use that program because I can't, you know, do my quote unquote art form of video editing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, a lot of people also, for some reason, okay, I know why, but a lot of people say that for, in terms of Linux video editing, it's like, wh why are you t using um, DaVinci Resolve when you can just use Blender? And <laughs> they, like, I've got a video on uh, Blender's video editor. That's a fun video. Yeah, like the thing is that if you if you have experienced if you're experienced in video editing or like professional video editing or stuff like that, then mm -hmm. it's like then you wouldn't just recommend it um so lightly in the sense that sure, I could definitely make videos in Blender, but mm -hmm. um can I make the type of videos that I'm making right now? And if I can, is the experience of making those videos going to be as smooth as is with, you know, DaVinci Resolve or Adobe or Sony Vegas, because like, um, like I said, a lot of time in terms of making videos goes into dealing with the software itself rather than, um, you know, performing actions that create the effects or whatever. Yeah. So that's why I, I find it a bit sad when, okay, not sad. It's just that, People who blindly recommend Blender as a proper su substitute for high-end video editing probably just aren't that experienced with video editing. But um, it's I'm actually surprised that Blender is a video editor as well, in the sense that uh, uh, the first time I heard somebody suggest Blender as a video editor, I thought it was a joke because I thought <laughs> Blender was a 3D program only, but I guess it's some media suit or something. Yeah. It used to have a game engine in it, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. Get rid of that one. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, and one more thing about um, the reason I wanted to use Linux is because, um, you know, I've already used Linux in the past, like, mm. played around with it, and I used it at work because, um, you know, for coding and stuff. But yeah, the first time I... Okay, not the first time. The first time I installed Linux for my... Hey, <laughs> not even that time. I at one point I needed to use Linux um, mm. because I needed to use it for AI stuff. Basically, you couldn't do certain things in Windows. Mm, mm. Um, but then you had like um, TensorFlow and PyTorch and things like that with the CUDA support all came to Windows as well on yeah. NVIDIA. Well, and nowadays you'll have um, WSL if you if you need Linux. Yeah, like with w, WSL <laughs> VSL, you couldn't. Um, you couldn't do it in the first version, but now it's actually VSL2. And I think there you can use CUDA um, or AI stuff as well. Before you couldn't. So yeah, I basically, in terms of functionality of the things I'm doing, I don't actually need to use Linux like I needed to use it before. Be before I actually had like a reason to use it because otherwise I just couldn't do certain things. But in terms of like work, but mm -hmm. um, the reason I also want, wanted to try it was because I think it's just kind of fun in the sense that it is a hobby in the sense that customizing your desktop and you know trying to get things working on a free operating system and stuff like that, it is fun. It's um, something new and exciting and a lot of things. It's like, you know, it's like uh, there is a lot to try and look mm -hmm. forward to on Linux, but on Windows or Mac OS, uh, you know, for me, they are all perfectly fine, but mm -hmm. it's just like, it, it is what it is. And it's what it is. like, there's nothing new and exciting unless there's like a really big new update. 